The Ruger 1022 is known for being reliable, practical, compact, and affordable, which are the exact same qualities that made me choose the UTG Bugbuster to mount on mine, and we're going to take a look at one on this episode of Moondog Industries. This is the UTG Bug Buster, and I bought this a few years ago. I just wanted to show you what the packaging was when I got it. I'm not going to do a, like a regular unboxing here because this is what you'd expect to get if you ordered one. This comes with a full kit here. It comes with uh, quick detach rings. It also comes with a sunshade and caps, and as you can see here, also comes uh, with uh, a microfiber cleaning cloth and um, some an Allen wrench and, and, and uh, instruction manual. But this is what you will end up with after you're putting putting it all together. I've got the rings here, and they are I think I believe they're medium profile. It does come with a sunshade and it does come with front and rear caps. I took the, the rear one off, but this is the front one. When you put in the sunshade though, the way this is designed, uh, these ribs here, there are corresponding ribs to the front lens cap, which is n nice. It certainly keeps it secure uh, with these ribs on here. And the ribs do help make uh, for turning very much more easel, easier, uh, even with gloves on and it did turn smoothly when I first got it out, didn't have any problems with it. You can hear a little bit of rubbing. That, that's probably from my abuse over the years of just, you know, tossing this into my range bag or, or whatnot, but it was, it turned smoothly and, and uh, when I got it and turns smoothly now, you know, a little rubbing there. Thing is, when you put the um, sunshade on, those ribs don't really keep it in place very well. So that's, that, that is definitely um, an, a problem, design fail here. They really should have designed uh, this front uh, cap to fit with a sunshade uh, or, figure, or just use uh, a bra or whatever. But um, you know, it is what it is. If you put the sunshade on, you can pretty much forget about putting the cap on because it's, it's pretty loose. Anyway, uh, rear caps also um, fit into this ribbing on the back here for your uh, fast or ocular focus. Again, turns smoothly. May not sound as smooth as it feels, but definitely turns smoothly when I got it. There is similar ribbing on the power dial here, as well as a little raised one, almost like a, uh, a nub, like a little mini throw lever. It goes from three to nine. That's three to nine power here. It is also illuminated. It's red and green illumination. Um, forget which size of the battery. It did come with a battery. So it is a CR1620 type of a button battery. And it does come with locking turrets. And I actually like this design of how this locking turret works. The, uh, the turrets are raised and are nicely knurled so you can turn them and they are nicely, pretty loud and nicely positive in terms of tactile response. Here's the windage. And I have tested this over, over the years and it does hold zero and it does track well. The, the locking mechanism is this other uh, ring, this other rib below it. You turn it to tighten it down and it locks the turret. So that keeps you from accidentally, was you're grabbing this or whatever, um, changing um, your zero. I like that is that you know you really have to cinch it down to lock it and loosen it to unlock it. Whereas a pop turrets, you can accidentally you know, pop it open and, and mess up your zero unintentionally. These ones you definitely can't accidentally, unless you forget that you've tightened them down or whatnot. Anyway. Let's take this out to the range and see what it looks like through the glass. We are looking at the peak of Mount Davidson, approximately 1,300 yards away through the UTG Bugbuster, which is a 3 to 9 power by 32 millimeter scope. It's a very compact scope, and uh, overall, the image quality is pretty good. You can see it here. Uh, we have it set at its lowest power setting of 3, so we can get our best sense of overall image quality. 
um, through the glass in terms of color saturation, detail, contrast. And uh, we can compare it to the overall sky um, and uh, foliage at about 50 feet away. Now, when you're going to be, if you're looking at something this far away, you are picking up a lot more of uh, atmosphere can uh, atmosphere between you and something 1,300 yards away. So there is going to be a little bit of color shift, uh, as well as uh, a little bit of haziness. So just bear that in mind. Uh, so let's magnify it up to its highest power setting of nine power and see what we can see. Now, and I notice here that there was no shift in point of aim, which is good, and there was also no significant shift in terms of uh, eye relief because uh, we can everything's still in focus, and the eye box is actually really good. Um, it's very forgiving um, at its highest power setting. Now, just take take note that there is a white object just to the left of the center reticle. That is a 36 inch steel uh, trail marker sign so that'll give you a good indication of what a steel target would look like at this distance all right now let's head over to the range and i've got some reference targets up at the target stands and we'll go over to the 100 yard benches and while we're walking back do me a favor and hit that like button it really helps because it tells the ai that this is good content and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It's absolutely free and it helps you because it tells the AI that this is the kind of content you like watching and it'll suggest more videos like this instead of say, cat videos. Unless that's your thing, you know, no judgments. And if you like to watch things other than guns and ammo, well, I got you covered there too. Check out my other channel, Moondog R&D, a channel focused on gadget reviews, photo and video gear, you know, geeky stuff. If you don't see a link now, you'll find one at the end of the episode. We're looking at targets right now at three power. And let's see the range of adjustments we get with the bug buster here. Okay, let's bottom out there. It's feeling resistance now. Yep, that's that is the range. Okay. Now let's see the, our windage. Yep, that's as far as we'll go on the, on the right. And that's as far as I'll go on the left. Okay, so let's zoom in to max power of nine. Take a look at that image. It's a sh see, I'm gonna do a digital zoom from here. See if we can get that any sharper. Do a 300% zoom on there. And that is as good as we're going to get this image. It's rather milky. And let me just take a look. Even at 300%, I cannot, I can make out some holes on the reactive targets. I cannot see any holes on paper at all. And if I was going to be charitable on the U.S. Air Force's optical resolution chart, I'm only able to make out one or two on, on uh, sorry, element two on group negative two, and a lot of chromatic aberration. And this is with 300% digital zoom. I'm gonna bring it back down to 100%. But let's zoom it in to 300% so we can at least run a box test. Elevation. Windage. Oops. OK, 
Okay, back down on the elevation. And back over on the windage. Alright, so it did it did return to zero, so it passed the box test. Alright. I'm gonna run nipple twister test. So overall, I've been pleased with my purchase. In its price tier, this 3 to 9 power scope is actually pretty good. Sure, the optical quality could be better, it could be brighter, but I got this because it was small and compact. This is on a 1022 takedown, and that's the whole reason of buying the takedown model. Now, for some of you, this is a viable reason, but I found that the Bugbuster was one of the only 3 to 9 power scopes that will fit in Ruger's takedown bag when you have the rifle disassembled. And for purely aesthetic reasons, I chose the Bugbuster because it looks appropriately sized for a compact rifle like the 1022. It doesn't look oddly oversized, and if you think this is the case, um, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. And if you want to pick one up, look in the article on my blog for links. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Moondog, out. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please share it on forums, Facebook, Reddit, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, MeWe, whatever social media you're on. And if you want to see all of my videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com.